Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to cut up a bone-in rib. So this is USDA Choice from Swift. Um, it is a choice cut of meat and it's got a bone in it. This, so this would normally be used for bone-in ribeye, bone-in rib roast, prime rib, all that stuff there. And I'll show you rib steak. Rib steak too. I'll show you a couple different ways on how to cut this up. So, just to give you a little bit of insight here, I've been cutting meat for about 18 years, since I was about 20 years old. I uh, worked for a bunch of different companies. Um, so, throughout the time, this is my first video actually, just to let you know. <laughs> so, it's not going to have any editing. I don't plan on doing any editing for a while. So just take a look at the video, hopefully it helps you out. Um, what we're gonna do here, for me, I plan on using this as all steaks. I don't plan on using it as roast, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you do wanna make a roast out of this and cook it, I'll show you how to do that. But me, I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna debone it, pull this rib off the back here because I plan on smoking those and getting them in the smoker and having a meal with that. Um, but I'll show you what to do if you decide you want to keep this as a bone-in rib roast and you want to cook it as a roast. So let's say I want to keep half of this for roast and then I'm going to do the rest for steaks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of these two ribs here. You know, let's say I want to do this half here or this half here. I'm going to take my knife. I'm going to run it straight through here and there's a, there's a spot right in here that's cartilage you'll be able to run your knife right through it you don't need a saw you don't need any of that and I'll show you how to do that quick so right through those two I'm gonna cut straight down just like that okay so what I did was I split the two bones right through that little tiny piece of cartilage there so now I got a nice little rib roast so usually when I make these rib roasts uh, for a customer, what I'd end up doing is I would take a little bit of this fat off here, not much because you know when you rib roast, you kind of want all this fat to stay on here. Um, but I like the looks of the bone-in ribs to stick out a little bit. So what I would do for like a custom look after you get it out of the oven. It looks really nice because you got these bones sticking up just like this. Like that. So if you want to like impress some of your guests for Christmas dinner or something, just like that. You're gonna take these little chunks of meat off. So you got these bones sticking up, right? But it's always a pain in the butt to carve when you got a bone and rib roast. So what I do is I take all these ribs right down to almost off. So they're just barely hanging there. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna leave you a rib roast that you can easily carve. When you get it out, done cooking it, this is just gonna fall right off of your roast and then you're gonna have you're gonna have a nice nice little rib roast there for you so here's the thing I left a little bit of meat on these because I plan on I plan on smoking these and I want a little bit of meat left on them so that way I have a nice nice rig rib rack to smoke up okay so that's your boneless rib there's your ribs, there's your boneless rib steak. Beautifully cut. Once we start cutting them down, usually what you do is you do debone the whole entire thing and then you start at one end and work your way down. But because I wanted to show you how to do the rib rolls first, now I'm gonna start at my clean cut and I'm gonna cut my nice steaks. Just like that. And you don't need any trimming on that. That thing is perfect, ready to go on the grill. Um, you can cut them whatever size thickness you want. I usually do about an inch, inch and a quarter. 
nice big hearty steak so if if you end up having a you know a friend over or something just doesn't want that big of a steak then you just trim it cut it right down cut it in half now you got half of that so I usually take off a little bit of this fat off top I don't really like the fat on top and I save that fat for grinding venison burger I'll keep pretty much everything everything off of this roast there's not much I don't throw away. I want everything to be used. There's always a small little face at the end. You don't want you don't want your cuts to be a wedge cut. So if you take a look, I got this tiny little facing off of here. Some might freak out and say it's way too much to take off, but I want my steaks to look nice and square. So that way when you're cooking them on the grill, they come out perfect every time. You don't have some spots overdone and some spots bloody. So, got that there. Those are my steaks. Let's see here. So, we cut the, we, basically what we did was we took the ribs off Cut, trimmed a little bit of fat here and here, and then cut them all into steaks. So you got nice ribeyes. And this is the cheapest way to have awesome steaks all year round because you can go to Costco and you can buy the whole cryovac. You do not have to pay for the labor for them to cut it up. Um, or you can go to Cub Foods. This is where I got it from. I got it from Cub Foods. And it's amazing, amazing meat. It's good stuff. So, I got those steaks there. We're gonna have to set those aside for later. So now, like I said, I wanna... Okay, so after cutting all these steaks here, I'm gonna take this last bit of roast here that I got and I'm gonna debone it. Um, normally, I hug the bones really tight, um, but I'm not going to on this one because I, I like that. I like my ribs a little bit meatier um, when I go to smoke them. So I'm gonna run my knife down around here. You know, and I think I'm using a 13 inch blade right now. Makes it a little bit easier for cutting the big rows. Check that out. That has a nice meaty rib. Right before I go to cook these, I'm gonna pull this skin off the back. Let me show you how to do that real quick. I usually just take a fork. Take a fork and get it up in here like this. If you can get it in there. I don't know if you can see that. Get your fingers up behind there. But what this does is it's actually going to make the ribs a lot more tender. Otherwise this stuff cooks up like plastic. So when you go to smoke your ribs, you get all done smoking them, all of a sudden you got like this plastic hanging off the back. So you get your stuff up underneath there. and Works a lot better if you got a meat hook meat hook right now so I'm just using a fork you get the picture like all comes off this I do not save I throw it away it goes in the garbage but before I go to smoke these that'll all be off there and I'll season them up real good this that little piece that I was telling you about what I like to do with that is I will take the fat off just like this all that off and I will keep that fat but I'll turn this into stir fry so it all works really really good for stir fry so you can get a couple different things out of this roast going forward I'm gonna be making more videos 
on other other meat so that way you can eventually learn how to cut up a whole entire cow start to finish we're gonna do pigs we're gonna do um we're gonna do some uh venison this winter cut up some deer okay so i'll just go ahead and this guy here it's a little crooked just because if you cut it in half at the beginning and had to follow that bone down but i'll turn that into stir fry as well Too much fat on here for my liking so i'll take that off but i'll save it because i want to make burger out of it works really good if you save that throw it into some mock tenders mock tenders are generally 90 percent lean so you grind up some mock tenders with a little bit of that fat end up making 80 percent nice nice hamburger for making burgers more cuts here helps to have a sharp knife you know meats uh, not as easy to cut through as people think okay see this one here this is what I was talking about where I do not like wedge cuts because that is gonna you know put that on the grill it's gonna be totally destroyed by the time you're done cooking it this side will be raw this side will be way too cooked so this is that end piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take the sliver off the back here and even it out. So you got a nice even steak when it comes time to go and do your grilling. Okay, booyah, looks good. And this side here versus, let me just show you the difference, okay? This is the opposite end of the ribeye okay this is one end this is the other end the difference between it is this one here is actually almost a new york strip it's the last cut before it hits the new york strip this one here is the last cut before it hits the chuck eye so if it was on the cow it'd be kind of hanging down the neck there and this piece right here would be the very first cut after the chuck comes off the cow. So this one's gonna be your most tender out of the whole entire ribeye. But it does have a little bit more fat in it, but it's definitely gonna be more tender than your New York strip side. Still a ribeye, but it's on the New York strip side. So it's a little bit more lean. The fat runs more on the top. And you kind of have this gristle that runs through here. It's a little tough, you know, um, but it's, it's definitely a great steak. Um, let's see here. So, like I said, this is probably a little too much fat for my liking, so I'll take that off. Just gonna trim it up a little bit. Get all that loose fat hanging. Get that off there. And this one here, same deal. Trim it up. Just like that. So when you're all done, with your steaks, you kind of want them to look like a little bulldozer. Okay. So that pretty much wraps up the ribeye for cutting up the bone in, rib steak, um, prime rib. Look at how many steaks I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven steaks, you know, for. 200 bucks is what it generally runs, 250, something like that, depending on where you go. Um, but you could also cut these a lot thinner and get twice as much meat out of it. Um, this, this is just the way I like my steaks cut. A lot of people like them a little bit thinner. You know, it depends on who you're cooking for. But at least if you cut them this thick, then when it comes time to have people over and they want them thinner, you can cut them thinner. And now you got two steaks, you're serving two people. You know, it just at least gives you that option. If you cut them all thin, then all of a sudden when people come over, they're like, ah, man, I wish you really had some thick steaks. Well, you know, you won't have them if you cut them all thin. So that's why I cut them thick. 
you know, cryovac them, get them all ready for, you know, going in the freezer if you want to freeze them. Um, I buy my meat in bulk, freeze it. Just make sure that before you go to cook it, you're thawing it out completely and you get it to room temperature before you go to cook it. That'll make sure that your frozen steaks, even though they're frozen, they'll still turn out good on the grill. If you try to throw them on partially frozen or even, even uh, at the temperature for the refrigerator temperature, they're still not going to turn out as good as you want them to. It's the reason why a lot of people don't like frozen steaks. It's just because they don't taste fresh, but as long as you let them sit and get room temperature before you cook them, season them up, let them sit on the counter for an hour or two, then go ahead and throw them on the grill. You're going to love them. Anyways, like I said, it's my first video. Hopefully I can make some more here and get you guys set up to learn how to cut pretty much everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped you out. Subscribe, like, hopefully share it. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.